Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you how to warm up this baby image. So this is the starting photo. And this is where we end up, where we have a nice overall warm atmosphere and then some light coming from the top right. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, my Patreon supporter get a bonus video for this tutorial where I show you how I adjust this dock image again, making it warmer and giving it this nice light coming from the top right. And this has some additional adjustments in that case because it's a nature photo. Also, as you can maybe see here, I have some new functions in my tutorial. You can see now my mouse has a circle around it. It's blinking when I click it. Also, I can draw on my screen, which is pretty cool. And you will see the keys that I'm pressing up here. Let me know if that helps you or if that is distracting down in the comments. Okay, let's get started here. And of course, the first thing we want to do here is to play around with white balance because that is the easiest way to warm up an image. So down here where we have our adjustments, click on that, select white balance. And then here you have your slider, you can make the image cooler or you can make the image warmer. And this already helps us a great deal. Now, what I don't like about it in this specific result is that while we make the image warmer, the colors also become more intense. And I feel like the red and the green here is just too intense. It's now too loud for that nice, cozy sleeping baby. So what I want to do is to use an HSL adjustment. Again, we go down here to adjustments and then we select HSL. And now what you want to do is to make sure that the HSL adjustment layer sits below the white balance adjustment. So click on that, drag it down, make sure there is this long blue line, let go of that. And then you can see now it's sitting between the image and the white balance. And now with this multicolor dot here, which means that we are adjusting all of the colors at the same time, we're using our saturation shift. And with that, you can have more saturation or less saturation. You can also go to zero, in which case you basically have a black and white image. So of course we don't want to do that. I just want to readjust it a little bit. So we have a nice balance between the warmth that we have added to the image and also the desaturation of the color so that they come together in a nice way and it feels soft and it kind of feels nice for this image that we have of the sleeping baby, right? Not too loud. Don't wake up the baby. All right. So after we have done this, the next thing that I'm seeing here is that now the image looks a little bit like there could be more contrast in there. So this is what we are going to do next. I'm going to create an adjustment here for brightness and contrast. And with that, I'm simply pushing up the contrast a little bit and you can go with this by taste. I don't want to have a super high contrast because again, it's getting really loud. It's getting a little bit aggressive. So just a little bit more contrast is good enough for us to see the details a little bit better. All right. So we have come a long way with these simple adjustments. The next thing that I want to adjust here is that I'm not super happy with how the colors feel, how they taste. And a really good way, a very easy way to adjust that is to use the good old color balance here, this adjustment. So let's create that too. I will put the color balance on top of all the other layers. So it is adjusting everything that we have adjusted so far, rather than that I adjust the colors and then the white balance is changing my colors again. So I want to change the final colors of what I'm seeing right now on my screen. When you look at the image, you can see that most of the tones are here in the mid tones range. So we can use that. There is not much highlights. There is some shadows, but I don't want to adjust them in this case. So let's go with the mid tones here. And then what we are going to do is to play around with these sliders and you go with your eyesight, with how it feels to you. So let's see, we have cyan and red here, and you can see that when we move this around, we can have 
some parts of the image a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. So let's warm them up a little bit like that. Then we have magenta and green. And this of course has an influence on the green areas. And you can see here very well, when I push this up, these areas up here, they become more green. But when I push this down, they blend a little bit better. They become, they are still, they feel green, but they are less intensely green. And this is kind of nice for us because then everything becomes a little bit softer in the image. Then also we have yellow and blue. Let's play around with that. And with that, you can see what could actually cool down the image again a little bit, or we can warm it up. So let's give it a little bit more warmth here. Just a tiny touch like that. Okay, pretty cool. I feel like this image would really benefit from having this nice light coming from the top left side because that creates a lot more atmosphere. And here's a little trick on how I like to do that. We go over here where our shapes are and there, as you can see, you can select a lot of shapes. I want to use the ellipse tool. So let's drag out an ellipse here. You can make it fairly big like so. So this is basically a vector shape right now. And we can actually make this into a blurred shape by using our layer effects. And this will still keep it a vector shape. And at the same time, it has a blurry fading edge, which is nice for us. So let's go over here. You can see we have our effects. There is our Gaussian blur. Let's push this up. In this case, 100 pixels is not enough. It looks like this is the maximum we can do, but you can actually enter a number here. So let's say we go with 600 instead, and then boom, you can see this is a lot softer. You can even go higher if you want to. You can go to 800 like so, and that's already nice. Now, what you can also see here is that this light is white and that's probably not ideal for what we want to do here. So let's color this light in a little bit. And for that, I actually want to use a gradient because then I can have the light change over the amount or over the distance it goes from the center of my ellipse. So let's do this real quick here. Click on gradient. And then let's put a color in on one side here, just so we see where that is. You can see right now it's in the center. And then over here we have white on that side. And you can see this is right now a linear gradient. And if you want to, you can use it like that. But because we have an ellipse, I would suggest that we are actually using an elliptical gradient in that case. Again, when you look at the preview here, you can now see that the white is in the center of the ellipse. So that might not be ideal for us. We can turn this around simply by clicking on reverse down here in that area. Let's click on that. You can see now it's turned around, but we don't know from where to where the gradient is actually going. So to find that out, we are going to click here on the gradient tool over here. And you can see we have here our middle point and there is our outer point. So let's move this over here and you can even resize that to bring that in a little bit more like so. So you can play around with the size of the gradient, which is independent of the size of the ellipse when you adjust the gradient. When you adjust afterwards the ellipse, the gradient will change with it. But while you're adjusting the gradient, it's independent. You can see I can make this bigger or smaller and the ellipse is not changing while I'm doing that. Now here's another trick that we are going to do. Let's click back here on the ellipse and I'm going to click here to create an additional point, move that inwards a little bit and I click on the outer point and with that I'm reducing the opacity. And this means that in that area you can see here by the checkerboard that now the color is fading out in that area, which means in that area our ellipse, our gradient is getting transparent. So this is very helpful to have a softer fade on the outside. So we can play around with that. Let's set up some different colors here. Let's go here with a nice, let's say kind of a, a bright um, orange like that. That's already nice. And then let's go here and maybe half. That is kind of okay. And now of course, you might think, well, eh, that's way too intense. I can't use it like that. 
Let's click on the move tool again so we can move our ellipse around like that. And the way we get this to look more like light is go over to your layers tab again and set the blend mode here to screen. So you can see now it looks a lot more like light. And now you can again scroll out. The way I'm doing this, by the way, is I'm holding control down and I'm using my mouse wheel like that. And then I can resize this and I can move this around like so. And this already is helping me. And this is kind of the brighter ellipse. And then I'm duplicating the ellipse. Right click here, duplicate. And the second one I'm making much larger like this, for example. But at the same time, I'm going to reduce the opacity. And when I do that, you can see that I'm creating a softer light that is going towards the baby. And then we have a stronger light here in the corner where it's getting closer to the light source. So you can play around with that. And of course, you can also reduce the opacity over here. And you can set this up completely to your taste on how you feel like this should look in the end. Here is another thing I want to do because now we have a stronger light source than before. I want to introduce some shadow to the baby and also this will help us to see the shapes of the baby better. It becomes more 3D because of that and I will put this actually on top of our light effect. So the way I'm doing this is I'm going to create a pixel layer here like this and let's call this DG for dodge and burn and then I'm using my paintbrush. You have seen me do this often before. Hardness to zero, opacity rather low. I have it at 14% right now. And then I will open up here my color chooser. And with that, I can switch between different colors. So let's go here to a dark black. There is one more step. You need to change the blend mode to soft light. That's really important. So our dodge and burn trick works. As you can see now, when I paint on that part, it is becoming darker in that area here. Let's go here to black because the opacity is rather low. So you can see when I turn this on and off, this part now is actually a bit darker. So let's paint up here. And this, by the way, is fairly non-destructive because we are on an extra layer. So don't worry about that. You can always go back from that. You can simply paint over with a different shade of gray and white will then white will actually make it brighter and black will make it darker. So everything that's above this 50% gray will make it brighter and everything below will make it darker. So right now, the only thing I want to do is to introduce some shadows to some of the parts here where the light is hitting it from the side. So also down here, I feel like there should be some more shadow, maybe even over here like so and when you do this it doesn't look very much like there is something changing but when you turn it on and off you will actually see the changes here so i feel like here for example we did a little bit too much so let's use a lighter gray and paint over this again to make this a little bit softer here on that side and that looks good all right, then over here in that area, I feel like we also want to have a little bit of that just on that edge of that little, how do you say, um, fabric. Okay. Oh yeah, down here at the leg also, the foot, a little bit more shadow here, a little bit more shadow there. All right, so let's look at our baby again. And you can see now when we turn this on and off that this actually does have a very nice effect on our baby image and gives it a little bit more dimension than before. This is our final result. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're a Patreon supporter, head over to my Patreon page and look at the second part of this tutorial where I'm going to adjust the dock image. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Let me know in the comments if you like the new functions with the circle and everything. And if you want to see more like that. And of course, if you really like my tutorial, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a video. 
Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.